friends. Happy Supermoon Sunday. we got another Supermoon on the rise for Monday um, the 14th. So I'm recording this on the 13th, so we're looking forward to another beautiful full moon. I wanted to show you guys, um, take you through the whole process of how I created my little small journals out of a spaghetti box and a toothpaste carton. And I've had questions about how did I do this, so I, uh, I thought I'd just put together a really quick tutorial for you. It's not complicated, but there are some handy little hints to know along the way. Uh, other people have asked about what I'm going to do with these journals, and I thought these journals would be very nice for gifts. You can see that on the inside, uh, we, we do have space to write and we do have space to draw, but there's, there's, and there's, I mean, now I'm looking at it, I'm like, well, you know, there's quite a lot of it. So you could use the little journal as a dream journal, or I think it would be kind of cool as a travel journal too, you know, if you're going on a, a day trip or a three day trip or whatever. I also, I really like these as decor items. I like to toss these on a table. Uh, it's something that did not come from some big chain store. It was made by you, not somewhere else. Um, and I think that they make really nice decor items. I also, I used a lot of texture papers in mine. And I like doing this because to me that's inspiring. I can look in here and I can see colors and textures and... I like to get inspiration very organically. I'm not one of these people who's, who trolls YouTube looking for things. Uh, there's marvelous, marvelous artwork out there. And I do look at a few sites, but I'm really, I'm very specific about the folks that I, I, I really do like to follow and uh, the projects that I, that I gravitate to. Um, so a lot of times, because I'm not, you know, I'm not YouTubing all the time. I, honestly, if you if you go there and you see all these perfect projects, you think, whoa, never going to be able to do anything that perfect. And you know, instead of being inspiring, sometimes they're kind of intimidating and a little depressing because you realize, or I realize, that I'm never going to get to perfect. And Perfect is not why I do art. Um, I do art because it helps my process of healing and it helps my mental state a whole lot. So if you're reaching for like that pinnacle of a perfect piece, um, this is not the place for you because we just have fun here. We, we, um, we just aren't going for perfection. I, I have enough of that in my day job. So I, I don't want to extend it to something that I'm doing for fun. So what I wanted to do today, y'all, is just kind of take you through the process of making one of these little books. I've, just for an example, this is an old El Paso uh, food container. And the first thing that you're going to want to do is, is choose a box. You know, I love tea boxes, but tea boxes in this instant are not going to work because they usually open on the top, right? Um, so they won't work. I, I would choose a spaghetti box, a toothpaste carton, something like this. Um, I'm going to use my, this is what I'm going to work on today. This is a, a dog food container thing. And it's nice that it, this is clean because these things are, are uh, packaged in cellophane. And my little dog loves them. Uh, not a fan of the cellophane, but she loves it. So first thing we're going to do is choose a box. Next thing is to smash that box flat, just like I've got this one smashed flat here. I would not recommend taking a bone folder and making creases anywhere. I, that just that that might um, um, might bother the integrity of your box. So no bone folding here. The first thing I like to do is kind of roll the box, just like this. And that kind of starts to sort of break it down a little bit, make it a little less stiff. And then I go ahead and fold my box. 
and I do make a crease right here. Again, no bone folders. If you start to try and use bone folders or do some sort of wonderful creasing job, you're going to tear everything. So, box, we've smashed it out flat. We've kind of given it a roll, and then we're going to fold it together like this. Now, that's the beginning of your book. The next thing that you're going to want to do is sand it. People go different ways with this. Some people don't want to sand. Some people do want to sand. For me, sanding the box was just a way for me to make sure that my uh, sprays were sticking and that my paint was sticking. So that's why I have this box that we're going to work with today all sanded up. And then the next thing that you're going to want to do is paint the box. I painted mine white because I knew that I wanted to just play with sprays. So I thought a nice white background would be really cool. So I'm going to paint this box white. I'm going to paint the flaps black. And then I'm going to glue the flaps into the book. But for right now, I'm going to paint this white. And then I will be back with you in a minute. Okay guys, I have my box painted white and I have my uh, flaps painted black. You don't really have to be very exacting about this. You can see that the Alpo logo and all that's still showing through. I, I don't really care about that. It will be covered up by sprays. If you uh, want to paint it instead of spraying it, you can cover it up that way. I like to have just a little bit of my main element showing when I do recycle crafts because people that kind of flips them out when they realize this is an Alpo box <laughs> which is kind of cool. All right the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to tuck these flaps in. Again I didn't uh, I mean you can see it's not very well painted at all. We're going to pick the box up Turn my glue's been sitting upside down, so hope hope I'll be able to get out like the very last of it. And then we'll put some glue on each flap. Now that's the first flap. It's a little bit tricky, but you'll get the hang of it. So that's our small flap, and we'll just tuck that in. If they're not sticking, y'all, you may want to use like a binder clip or something on it. I've had pretty good luck with mine sticking down, but uh, you might want to use a binder clip. And then we're just going to push this one in, just like that, and put a little glue here. Push this one in. Now, honestly, they kind of hold themselves in, but I'm just gluing. I don't want anything to pop open. All right, so that's one end. Okay, so press that down. Make sure everything's glued in there good. And then flip your little book over. And we'll do this side. You know, and just a little more about decor items. I, I, It's just kind of the time of the year when I, I just see so much plastic you know, being hawked on TV and being hawked in the stores, and it's like, gee whiz, man, that's just a lot of plastic <laughs> that goes on this holiday season. <laughs> you know, between plastic pumpkins and plastic toys and, and all that, it's just like, whoa, man. No more plastic. Okay, all right, there we go. All right, now um, I've, I've glued my flaps in. Now you can so you can you can see the book coming together. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like. And the cool thing is that you're going to have a pocket here. You're going to have a pocket here. So this book really becomes very expandable, which is super cool. All right, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use some sprays. A word about sprays. I learned to make my own sprays years and years ago. And it was probably one of the very first things I did. I, I bought some Heidi Swap uh, chartreuse and I learned to make my own sprays with a little bit of alcohol and a little bit of food coloring. So you can see that that's uh, 
that's how that's done and there are a lot of tutorials out there that that will show you um, how it's done this one I made with I made with old markers and alcohol you just soak the old marker tips in alcohol and that's what you get so my spraying is always like a combination of things my wonderful friends have given me like these delusion sprays and things that I have made so I'm going to spray this piece and then I'll be back with you in a minute okay friends I'm at the point where I am putting a little bit of varnish on my sprayed on the book where I use the sprays um, sprays are never stable or maybe they are and I just don't know how to use them I'm not sure but what I like to do is I like to put a little bit of varnish on the book and I like to drop the varnish on and then just spread it around I love the way this looks I like that when I drop the varnish on and I'll do it over here I'm not sure it'll do it um, because I've already uh, I've already varnished this part so it may not have that same effect just leave the varnish in place for a minute and sometimes I will just kind of tilt it and you know do funky things with it and depending on how long I leave that varnish there it will start lifting some of the some of the spray off of my book and it leaves really interesting patterns so we've we've let that hang out for a little bit look see I mean you just never know what it's going to do and I just think that that's kind of cool it just adds another element of kind of fun you know to what you're doing so I'm going to draw this and then I will be right back and I'll show you how to measure for your signatures Okay, friends, I finished up my book and I recorded this for you, but then I lost the recording. So, oh well. Uh, this is what the book looks like when it's finished. I did the beading on the side. And um, we'll just take a quick look inside. And oh my goodness, she's a big fat chunky monkey and she just looks so cool. She's got all kinds of random fun in here. Places to write, places to draw. Um fun fun things to look at I would like to thank my friend Ann who just sends me these crazy postcards that she's been collecting for years that she's now kind of in the process of of uh, getting rid of but oh my goodness I love like these crazy postcards that she sends look at, look at this isn't that neat okay guys I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you will take a box and make your very very own uh, journal I am going to use the pockets in this journal to put more postcards in and I'll show you really quickly how I'm going to do that and I am going to use this for an art journal I'm going to use it for a traveling journal and then that way I can have some inspiration with me anywhere I go so my